In this video, you're pulling a cart that has a mass, and you're applying a 600 newton force. All the dimensions are given, and you're asked to find the normal forces at wheel A and wheel B. You're given all of the dimensions of the cart. So, first of all, we're going to draw a diagram, a simpler diagram. And specifically, we're going to draw a free body diagram in this case. So we're going to isolate the body, which is the cart. So our cart is going to be a rectangle. And we are going to add forces to it. So first of all, we're going to add our center of gravity, which is point G. And this will is where the mass force will act. This is going to be equal to mg. Um, or the, this is where the weight is going to act, or the force due to the mass. Um, next, we're going to add the two normal forces. And again, these forces act are going to act at the bottom of the wheels over here. Okay, so the wheels, we're going to assume, are attached to, well, they are attached to the body. Um, so we're looking at the bottom of the wheels, um, not the pla in the place where the wheels and the cart meet. Um, so we're going to draw two forces um, here at the bottom, and we're going to name them NA and NB. So this here is going to be, um, this is point A, so where wheel A meets the ground, and so this is going to ca be called NA, and then to the right we have and B because this here is point B where wheel B meets the ground and then we uh, we have one more force which is the uh, tension force of that string you're pulling the cart with and this is just going to be called F and it's equal to 600 newtons that were given okay and then the last thing we have is an acceleration of the body so um, I'm just going to draw it in in red. Um, this, the direction of this is not given, um, but we're going to determine the direction. This is going to be A of G. And again, the acceleration is at the center of gravity, at the center of mass, and um, we're, we've assumed a direction, um, but again, there is, um, we're going to determine the magnitude and the direction later. Okay, and again, um, everything else is uh, drawn in the proper direction. Okay, so now that we have our free body diagram, we're going to write out the equations of motion for the body and solve them. Uh, again, I only have an x component of uh, the acceleration because, again, this is rolling, so there's going to be no y acceleration. And also, this is the coordinate system we're going to use. So x is positive this way, y is positive up, and a rotation is positive when it's counterclockwise. Okay, uh, so we're going to first take the sum of forces, both in the x direction and in the y direction. So first, Okay, so first we're going to start with the sum of forces in the x direction. And this is going to be equal to the mass times the acceleration of the body. So again, there's two ways of figuring out um, the acceleration, because again, we're not given a direction, um, but again, there is an acceleration um, due to this force here. So the first method, which is the one that I'm going to use, is um, scrapping this acceleration here and summing up of these all of these forces in the x direction and then equating them to ma, and that's going to give me my acceleration. Okay. On the other hand, I can apply an acceleration force to the body, okay? And the acceleration force is just the mass of the body times the acceleration of the body. And then if I sum up all of these forces, including that acceleration force, then I get a resulting acceleration. Um, but that is going to be equal in magnitude but opposite in direction to the actual acceleration because then it's an acceleration force balancing the actual acceleration. Okay, so in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to equate the forces in the x direction to the mass times the acceleration of the body 
in the x direction. Again, there's only an acceleration in the x direction because the wheels lie along the bottom. There can't be an acceleration in the y direction. So if we implement this, we get that uh, m a of g in the x direction is going to be equal to f. And if we plug in numbers, we get that 160 kilograms times a g of x is equal to 600 newtons. And so from this, we can derive uh, a g is going to be equal to 3.75 meters per second squared. Next, we're going to take the sum of forces in the y direction, um, but this time we're going to equate everything to zero because, like I said, there is no acceleration in the y direction. So um, we're going to go back to the free body diagram and take um, an A plus an B minus M G is equal to zero. And if we plug in the actual values, we get N A plus N B minus 160 kilograms times 9.81 meters per second squared is equal to zero. Okay, so again, we can't solve for N A or N B because they're both unknown, so this becomes an equation. And then we have our last equation, um, which is the sum of moments. And that's going to give us our second equation. So two equations, two unknowns. Um, we can solve for everything. So let's take the sum of moments. And in this case, we're going to take the sum of moments about A. Um, but you can take the sum of moments about any point on the body. Um, it's convenient to definitely pick a location with a force because that it cancels out that force. That force doesn't have any, um, doesn't have a line of action, so there's no uh, moment created. Um, so in this case, all the forces are uh, either at vertical or horizontal. They're 90 degrees with respect to each other, so it's very convenient. But if there's slanted forces, usually it's easier to pick a point where that slanted forces act, that slanted force acts, so that um, you don't have um, angles. Okay, so in case if instead of this F was slanted, I would definitely take the sum of moments about this point, um, since all of these are vertical. Much, much easier to take a sum of moments instead of doing a cross product or playing with angles where you might make a mistake. But in this case, we're going to pick A as our center for the sum of the moments. Okay? And um, again, in this case, so if you take the sum of moments, we have this acceleration, which again is going to lead to an acceleration force, an opposing acceleration force. Okay, so this acceleration here, um, I'm going to take it into account. So I'm going to equate the sum of the moments to um, the uh, force due to the acceleration, which is ma uh, times again that distance, which is um, the lever arm for that um, acceleration force. Okay, so if we implement this, we get the following. Uh, M A times H, um, and that's A G, is equal to, and this is going to have a negative sign, um, negative M G times D A. So this is uh, the force due to the um, due to gravity. So dA again is this distance here. Um, so that's the lever arm, and the force is mg, and it's going to be negative because again it's clockwise. It makes it spin clockwise. All right. Next we have nB. So nB times dA plus dB. Okay, again, this distance, the lever arm is this distance here, and that distance there, as you can see from the diagram, is dA plus dB. And so we're going to 
um, use that distance there. And then we have our last term, which is minus f times uh, y plus 2 times r. And so f is the force due to the um, pulling. So again, the uh, lever arm is this distance over here. And again, that distance over there is going to be equal to um, y plus 2 times the radius. Um, because this is a circle, so we have 2 radii, so 2 times the radius. Um, so that's why we have 2r. And so this is our full sum of moments. And now we can plug everything in and get the following. And I'm going to go on a new line. Okay, so again, 600 newtons times 0 0.9 is F times y plus 2r is so 1.28 is dA plus dB. Um, and this equation, there is one unknown, which is nV. And remember, this 3.75 was the acceleration we found before. Uh, so we can directly solve for nB. So with this equation, we get that nB is going to be equal to uh, 997.6 newtons. Okay. So that is the first part of the answer, um, the normal force at B. And then with this NB, we can plug it into this equation here to solve for NA. Um, because again, it's an equation in NB and NA. So if we do that, we get that NA is equal to 572 newtons. And that is um, the final answer. So again, just to clarify, you can think of this acceleration in two ways. Uh, either adding an acceleration force that is going to be opposing. So if we did that, um, uh, you, would, you can assume a direction in that way, but since this force points to the right, this acceleration would point to the left. And that is the opposing acceleration force. The actual acceleration points towards the right. Okay. Um, or you can take the sum of forces and equate it to the mass times the acceleration, um, which if this is on the opposite side of the equal sign positive, it will be a negative on the left. So that matches what I just said. Um, and again, we also have to keep that in mind with the sum of moments. Um, so with the sum of moments, we also have to keep into account which way this acceleration uh, is turning the whole object. So that's where this negative sign comes into account. Um, because um, that this acceleration makes everything turn clockwise, it's negative. Um, the acceleration force, which opposes, um, would be positive. Um, but again, that acceleration force would be positive on the right side of the equation, um, so it becomes negative on the left side of the equation. So everything checks out. Okay. Um, so yeah, I suggest picking a method and sticking with it. So either assuming an acceleration force that is in opposite direction and then flipping it to get the actual acceleration or just writing the acceleration um, in in the direction it is with and e making it equal on the other side of the equation okay um, and this is the problem